God bless you, people of God. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I pray that each one of you all has been having a wonderful day. Super excited to bring to you the word that the Lord has placed in my spirit. God is telling someone today the Holy Spirit is going to encounter you. And you are going to recover everything that has been taken away. You're going to recover everything that has been lost. This is a season of much restoration. Don't think that the reason why you lost, lost those things was because the enemy was having an advantage over you. But the Lord has allowed certain things to happen in your life so that you can start knowing who is the God that you serve. For a long time, maybe you were putting your trust in the world. Maybe you were putting your trust in your job. You were putting your trust in all of these things. God is saying, the time has come, hallelujah, for you to put your trust in the Lord. Because now you're going to witness how he is the one that provides all of your needs. How he is the one, hallelujah, that is going to restore everything that has been taken away. This is going to be a transformation that is going to happen for many of you. And it's going to start from the inside out. Many of the things that God is bringing in your life is going to come as you start having this realization with the Lord and understanding that he is the one true God. The moment that you start coming into this awareness, you are going to start saying how everything even the enemy has taken away is going to find its way back to your life. For many of you, God is saying you're not even going to have to ask for it. You're not even going to have to pray for it. You're not even going to think about the things that God is bringing into your life. God is getting ready to just do it because this is a season of much restoration. Amen. People of God, God bless you once again. Thank you for tuning in today. I want to take this moment to just pray and put this live stream in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this time that you grant us to come together in your name. I pray, Holy Spirit, that from beginning to end, you will take control of everything I say and that you may Help me release this word the same way you have revealed it to me in the spirit. That this may be a season where you bring restoration to everyone that is listening to me. And that this live stream can mark a before and an after in their life. Because I hear the Holy Spirit say, he's not finished yet. God is getting ready to do amazing things in your life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. For all of the new subscribers that are joining this platform, I want to also invite you to like this video and to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. Amen. Awesome. People of God, the Lord led me yesterday while we were having a vigil at my church to Acts chapter 9. And I want to remind you, when the Lord is getting ready to speak to your life, you feel like a lot of pressure. And I really felt like God was getting ready to tell me something. So I was like, where is the revelation coming from? Where is the revelation coming from? And then the Holy Spirit led me to Acts 9. So let's go ahead and read it from beginning to end. And I'm going to explain to you how this restoration is going to come to pass. Okay. So the word of the Lord says, me Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether man or woman, he would take them as prisoners. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do next. So this was the moment, people of God, that the Lord had decided that he was going to change the life of Saul. The same way this is the moment that God has decided to bring big changes into your life. That the Lord has decided to mark a before and an after in your life forever. This is the moment that the Lord is going to take something away. The Bible says that what was taken away from Saul was his sight. He was, hallelujah, stripped of something that he needed. God is telling many of you the same way Saul had something removed so that he can come into the realization and receive the revelation of who Jesus was. There were many things that were taken away from you. It wasn't going to be forever. It wasn't going to be eternal. It wasn't going to be that God wanted to punish you or make you depressed forever. He was saying, I had to show you something. I had to show you that I am your father. I had to show you that I am your God, that you don't depend on other people, that but you depend on me. Remember that God had chosen Saul to change 
change his life and also use him for the kingdom of God. There were many of you that the Lord has chosen on a big for a big assignment. There were many of you that God has chosen for a big purpose. And the Lord is saying that time has come for that restoration to happen. But I want you to know that again, if things were taken away from you, it wasn't because God had forsaken you. It wasn't that God had forgotten about you. It wasn't that God wanted to punish you. God had to remove certain things to make room for the new uh, revelation. You know, the sight being removed made him completely dependent on God, right? If you can't see, you need help from somebody else. If you can't see, you know, you might need the sticks for you to know if you're going to bump, bump into something. Similarly, the Lord is saying to many of you today, he took things away so that you would depend on him completely. He took things away so that you would depend on him completely. At this moment, Saul depended on Jesus for instruction, for revelation on how it was going to be restored. The same way this is a season where the Lord is saying, I took these things away from you, not because I wanted you to suffer, but I wanted you to depend on me completely. I wanted you to depend on me completely. God is saying for many of you today, you have learned this lesson. People of God, remember that before the Lord brings elevation, before the Lord brings promotion, there are many things that you have to learn. And at the beginning, it's a test. At the beginning, it doesn't look like you're being tested or it doesn't look like a good thing, right? If you were to look at what Saul is going through, you would say, God, why did you take his sight away, but us that we know the end of the story. We know that it was necessary. I want somebody to write in the chat today and say, what I'm going through was necessary. The trial was necessary. The problems were necessary. The conflict, even God taking things away from me was necessary because it is producing in me hallelujah an eternal weight of glory an eternal weight of glory people of god what the lord had to take away was temporary but now what god was getting ready to do in the life of saul was forever was something eternal god is telling his people today what he did hallelujah in your life excuse me, what he did in your life previously was temporary. Now you're getting ready to walk into something that is going to be eternal. What God had to take away from you, the process, all of that was temporary. But now God is getting ready to open doors that are going to last forever. Because this moment marked the before and an after in the life of Saul. He went from being somebody that was persecuting Jesus and not knowing what he was doing to now being a man of God, now being someone that positively impacted the kingdom of God. So I want you to know, people of God, that you are coming out of that process, that you are coming out of that trial, that you are coming out of that testing, hallelujah, and that what God allowed you to go through the things that God had to take away, it was temporary. It was temporary. Thank you, Jesus. It was teaching us to depend on him. It was teaching us to not set our eyes on man, you know, this word is so powerful because something that the Lord has been ministering in my heart, that there are some people at this hour that you've been depending too much on yourself. You've been depending on your strength. You've been depending on your ability. And because of that, it feels like the blessing is tapped out. And you're like, I feel like I can't get past this. Like I could only do so much. And it's true. As human beings, we only have so much strength. But I dare you, this season that you're walking into, listen to what the Lord is saying. Depend on God completely. Depend on the Lord completely. There are going to be moments, people of God, that you're not going to know what to do. That's not the time for you to make decisions out of panic. That's not the time for you to say, okay, well, I'm just going to make something up and see what happens. That is the moment where you got to run back to the Father and say, God, help me. Because the purpose of the last process was to teach you this. You have to understand that you depend on him completely. Somebody is receiving this revelation today. And the moment that you receive this revelation, you become somebody that is victorious. You become somebody that is unstoppable. Because the Bible says that if God is for us, then who can be against us? If God is for your future, if God is for your assignment, if God is for your purpose, if God is for what he has for you, then no one can be against you. That is why we depend on him. Again, for those that are just tuning in, we are in Acts chapter 9. And God took away Saul's sight. He took something away. I don't know what the Lord took away from you. 
God wasn't punishing you, but he was trying to show you, you don't depend on that person. You don't depend on that job. You don't depend on those people. You depend on the Lord. I want to know if there's somebody in this room that could come in agreement with me and say, God, I understand this now. For too long, I was depending on the wrong people. For too long, I was depending on their compliments. For too long, I was depending on their appreciation. But now I understand that I depend on you completely. Okay? The Bible then says, listen to this in verse 7. The man traveling with Saul stood there speechless. People of God, this is what the Lord told me. And I want to share this with you today. I also told my church this. The next thing that God does for you it's going to leave you speechless. The next blessing that God does for you is going to leave you in awe. Like I've been telling you guys, for many of you, the Lord is saying you haven't seen nothing yet. And you've been celebrating that last miracle, and that's good. And you've been celebrating the present miracle, and that's good. But God is saying the next thing he does for you is going to leave you speechless. The Bible says that for a long time, these men were persecuting the people of God. So they were like persecuting God himself, but they didn't know who they were messing with. And I want to tell you something. You might be fasting and you don't really know what you're doing. You might be praying and you don't really know what you're doing. And you're saying, God, I don't know if I'm doing this the right way, but I'm just going to show up. I want you to know that like this man, maybe you don't know God a hundred percent. You don't understand everything in the Bible and that's fine because God is still going to show up for you and leave you speechless and show up and show you who is the God that you've been seeking. For them, it was who is the God that they were persecuting. But I believe that I'm speaking to the people of God. So the scenario is a little bit different. And God is saying that for you, the next thing that God does is going to leave you speechless. Listen to what the Lord is telling you today. It's going to take you weeks to catch up. It's going to take you hours to catch up. You're going to say, whoa, whoa, I'm, I, can't, I still can't believe you did this for me. I want to know who receives this word today. You're going to tell the Lord, I still can't believe you heard that prayer. There were certain prayers that you presented to the Lord and you put him at his feet and you said, maybe God is listening to this. Maybe he is not listening to this. And that's fine. I want you to know something of something, people of God. God heard those prayers and he's getting ready to show up and he's going to blow you away. Amen. He's going to blow you away. It's going to leave you shocked and it's going to be some time. For you to celebrate because like this man, it left them speechless. They had never seen something like this before. And remember, one of the reasons why they would persecute the people of God is because they thought that the Messiah was false. They thought that Jesus Christ wasn't true. They thought that the people of God were all false and all of these things, all, all of that negativity. There are many of you that you've been seeking God. And God is saying, you haven't seen me move the way that I'm getting ready to move for you. God is saying, you haven't seen me do miracles the way that you're getting ready to see me do miracles now. God is doing a new thing. Your faith was tested. You went through that trial and you passed. The time has come now for you to reap a good reward. And again, like the word says here today, the next thing that God does for you is going to leave you speechless. It's going to blow you away. Again, they have been seeking God. They had been thinking they knew of this God, but when they saw God move, they were like, wait a minute, maybe we did, We really didn't know what we got ourselves into. I really do believe that there is somebody in this live stream that you've been saying, I'm just going to try. I'm just going to see. I'm just going to listen to this girl on YouTube telling me to pray a little bit. I'm going to just see what happens. That little a faith that you have the size of a mustard seed was enough for God to say, okay, get ready now to see something great from heaven. God is saying, get ready now to see me move, to see me move. Seeking the Lord in this way provokes glory, provokes power. And I want you to know, people of God, that it wasn't in vain. Okay, let's keep on reading the word of the Lord. And for those that are just tuning in, welcome. We are in Acts chapter 9. Don't forget to like this video if you haven't, and also subscribe to this YouTube channel. For those that are taking the time, being led by the Holy Spirit to sow into this word, whether those that did on YouTube and on Cash App, the Lord bless you and multiply your seed times a hundred. Amen. The word of the Lord then says, 
Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see anything. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. It says for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called them in a vision. People of God, I want you to know something today. God is speaking to your destiny helpers about you. A couple of days ago, I released a word that a, a big blessing was coming, that the transfer was getting ready to happen. This word goes in alignment with that revelation as well, because something that Ananias had was now going to be manifested in the life of Saul. And there were things that other people have, hallelujah, that is getting ready to be transferred into your life. God is speaking to your destiny helpers. God is speaking to the people that are going to push you. God is speaking to the people that are going to promote you. And whether they want to or not the time has come for you to be elevated for you to reach that breakthrough for you to reach hallelujah that new beginning the time has come and the lord is whispering something was taken away and isn't it interesting people of god that at the worst moment of saul that is when the lord decided to do something new in his life when he was blinded when he wasn't eating when he wasn't drinking anything and when things had been taken away that's why it's important for you to always put your trust in the Lord because he doesn't work like man and woman do. He doesn't need you to be perfect. He doesn't need you to be in shape or he doesn't need you to be the best version of yourself. And then he said, okay, well now I can, I can use you. No, at your worst moment, God shows up. When you don't have any strength, God shows up. When you don't know how God is going to do it, God shows up. Remember, because God is not seeing you how you see yourself right now. God is seeing the end result. God is seeing if I were to touch her heart, if I were to touch his heart, if I were to change his mind, if I were to set him free from that addiction, if I were to heal that marriage, that person would be an important tool for the kingdom of God. God doesn't see you as how you are right now. So don't worry if people are telling you, you are false or you're not good or who do you think you are all of this negativity you got to stay focused on what God has told you he's going to do in your life because he's seeing the end result one of the prayers that we're going to have I've been preparing my 5 a.m prayers for next week and one of the things that the Holy Spirit spoke to me in this in the spirit was to pray for him to mold us because a lot of times we're the ones that are blocking ourselves from reaching the other side we make so many excuses and we tell the Lord this and we tell the Lord that. We have to tell the Lord, mold me. You must have seen something in me that you called me. You must have seen something in me. Imagine for Saul. The Bible says that he was a murderer and he was really effective in organization and, to, and commanding people. So God said, if I were to put him in my team, he would have good organization. He would have a lot of authority. And that is how the Lord is seeing you. He is saying, wow, this individual, they have the wrong influence. Maybe they have a little bit of confusion. If I were to break these things off of them, they would be a great woman and a great man of God. They would be an amazing wife and an amazing husband. They would be an amazing business uh, business owner. They would be a great CEO. They would be a great employee. Whatever it is that God has called you to do, you better believe that it would be so. Because the Bible says it's not with our strength, it's not with our might, but with his Holy Spirit. So today, let that be one of your prayers that you tell the Lord, Father, mold me. Mold me into the version that you saw. Mold me into the things that you believe that I could walk in. Amen. So then it says, let's keep on reading because I'm trying to get to a certain portion in the Bible. So then it says, again, the Lord started to speak to Ananias about what he had to do in the life of Saul. Verse 11, for those that are just joining, we are in the book of Acts chapter 9. Amen. The Lord told them, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man named Tarsus named Saul for he is praying. Okay, so how did he know how to pray? Right? The Bible says that he would persecute Christians. So do you think he went to like Bible school or to the school of prophets or something? No, the Holy Spirit was already preparing him. People of God, whatever it is that God is calling you to do, whatever. And you say, I don't know how to do it. I don't even know why you're telling me to do this. Ask the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that he was praying. Who taught him how to pray? How did he even know what that was? 
the Holy Spirit because God was already preparing him for what he was going to walk into. Today, don't make the excuse and say, God, I just don't know how to do it. I don't even know. You have to tell the Lord, God, start telling me how to do it. How do I open this business? How do I start the platform? How do I become a wife? Start molding me, Holy Spirit, because whenever the opportunity comes, it's going to be like Saul, and they're going to find you ready. They're going to find you fasting. They're going to find you praying. They're going to find you interceding. They're not going to find you in sin. They're not going to find you in confusion. They're not going to find you in depression. They're not going to find you in that addiction. They're going to find you in the depths of the Holy Spirit. God told Ananias, go ahead and look for this man. And the Bible says that Ananias, look at what he said. I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with the authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. People of God, the Lord is saying, some people might know you because of what you used to do. Some people might know you because of who you used to be, but because Saul had spent some time prayer praying because Saul had spent some time in the presence of the Lord. God said he is now ready to be part of the purpose and the assignment that I have for you, for him. People of God, the Lord is telling you today, it does not matter what people used to know you from the past. You got to start telling them, I had an encounter with God. I had an encounter with the fire of the Lord and I changed. I'm not the liar I used to be. I'm not the cheater I used to be. Whatever that might be for you. You got gotta be for real. And you have to start saying, I'm not that version of myself I used to be. I had an encounter with God. I had an encounter. I don't know if there's somebody in this room that could take this for real. I know that sometimes we're very religious and we think that people can't change, but I'm here to tell you that I serve a mighty God. God. And it does not matter. It really does not. What are the things that you are going through? If you allow him to open, if you allow him to come into your heart, if you ask him, encounter me, he will change you. He will help you become the best version of yourself. And look at what the Bible says. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. He said, go. Okay, the Lord is telling people about you now. And he's not saying, oh, go and pray for her because she needs help. Go and pray for her because she's depressed. Go and pray for him because he needs money. No, 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 no. God is saying go because the promotion has come. God is saying go and, and walk, work with this person. God is telling your destiny helpers, go and work with this person because they have changed. Go and work with this person because the promotion has come. Go and work with this person because I've revealed myself to them. You are the one that the Lord has chosen at this hour. And God is sending people. Listen to this promise from the Lord. God is sending people into your life on the assignment to help you. It's an assignment. Okay. One thing is people doing something willingly. Like, oh, well, I just want to help you. Another thing is God sending them on the assignment. God is putting on people's agendas and God is saying on that agenda, you can't move. You can't go to your next, next task. Until you help Naya, until you help Destiny, until you help Daniela. There are people that the Lord is saying, until you go and give to them what belongs to them, they're not going to move on. That's how serious God is taking this restoration that is happening in your life. So I want somebody to come together in faith with me and start declaring, I am the instrument that God is using. I am the, I'm not the person I used to be. I'm not, Saul could have said, I'm not the murderer I used to be. God is now using me. God has chosen me as an instrument and he is sending the right people to come and give to me, bring to me this transfer, bring to me, hallelujah, everything that I need to walk on this assignment. The environment just changed. Amen. The environment just changed. So I feel the Holy Spirit in this room. And I feel, I believe somebody is listening to this that is really receiving this word today. Somebody has opened up their heart to this live stream. Whoever you are, God bless you. I feel it so heavy. Like everything just, I don't know how to explain when the Holy Spirit just shows up and 
focus is so much on a word is what I'm feeling now. So receive this word today. God is sending people on the assignment because he has changed who you are. He has changed your identity. He has even gone further to change your reputation. Saul had been known because he was a murderer, because he was persecuting the church, because he had authority to hurt, hurt people. And the Bible doesn't say that somebody else came and said, Ananias, this is a man of God. Now God changed his Hallelujah, reputation. And I am declaring over your life, people of God, that God is going to be the one that is going to do it. God is going to shut the mouth of your enemies. God is going to speak to people about you in vision. God is going to speak to people about you in dream. There is a big release that is happening from heaven tonight because the Lord is saying the time has come for you to be promoted. The time has come for you to be elevated. And whether people want to or not, this is is your hour. So God is going to send them on the assignment to give you these platforms, to give you these opportunities, to open the doors for you in Jesus name, because the time has come for you to walk in this. Now I want to continue reading because this is where I kind of focus my message on. And God bless those that are sowing into this platform, into this live stream today on YouTube or Cash App. May the Lord bless your seed. May the Lord bless your seed with every blessing from heaven in Jesus' mighty name. Verse 17 says, Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, right before when he spoke about Saul, he says, Tarsus named Saul. But now he was calling him a brother. Right now, we could start seeing that change in the reputation of Saul because whenever God speaks about you, listen to this, you don't need people to speak about you. You don't need people to write resumes. You need God to speak about you. Whenever God speaks about you, whenever God knows your name, whenever God has said it's time, heaven and earth are going to move based on that assignment. Heaven and earth are going to move based on what God is saying. Stop chasing after people and begging them for an opportunity. Stop chasing after people that have already chose shows showed you that they don't want to work with you start chasing after god because when god speaks about you people have to show up when god says that they, you have been chosen when god says that you walk in favor when god says that this is one of my own it does not matter what the devil or his agents say about you what god has said prevails so let this be a season when you start making it your prayer and you tell god speak about me be on my side we have to be like Moses and we have to say hallelujah we have to be like Moses and we have to ask the Lord if your presence doesn't go with me don't send me we have to receive that revelation that when God speaks about us earth has to move people are going to move in the same way I feel that's so heavy because there are some people that when they when God tells them to bless you they don't want to they don't want to bless you Listen to this. There are some people that God has spoken about you and the Lord has said, bless this person and they don't want to. So today we prophesy in the name of Jesus that God is touching the hearts of all of your destiny helpers, that God is touching the hearts of every individual that the Lord has already said is supposed to help you. Today, God has touched the hearts of those that have your blessing. And the Lord is speaking over them and is saying, release. Release the blessing. Release the promotion. Release the prosperity. I'm even going to go deeper and say, the next blessing for them, they're not going to reach it until you receive your blessing. They're not going to receive their breakthrough until they do what God has called them to do in your life. So we prophesy, excuse me, in Jesus mighty name, that every individual that has been sent on the assignment to bless you, to support you, to promote you, whatever that might be, tonight receives further revelation that the time has come for them to receive this blessing and for them to release the blessing into your life. In Jesus' mighty name, if there's somebody in this room that can say amen, is there somebody in this room that can say, Father, speak to my destiny helpers about me, speak to my kingdom spouse about me, speak to my business partners about me, speak to the lenders, the financial lenders, lenders about me, speak to those that have a piece of my puzzle of 
about me because somebody has to say, I'm ready to see the full picture. I'm ready to see the full manifestation. I'm ready to see why it is, hallelujah, that you've called them into my life. Somebody has to understand this. Somebody has to understand. And to listen to this, unless Ananias came, Saul would have still been there blinded. There were certain things that are not going to happen until you meet your destiny helper. The Bible says that when Ananias came, then he received the restoration of his sight. That's why you have to be aggressive in this prayer. And that's why I feel the Holy Spirit telling me to focus here just a little bit more. Because he's still speaking to us about this. The Bible says that Ananias came. When he came, he gave something to Saul. And then he received the restoration of his sight. There were certain things in your life. That are not going to happen until these individuals come. So today we have to make it our prayer and ask the Lord, Father, speak to my destiny helpers about me. Speak to those that are supposed to help me about me and bring them into my life aggressively. Change the way that they see me. Say this with me if you believe this word is for you, this part of this segment. Say, Father, change the way that they see me. Right? It was God the one that changed. At first, Ananias had a certain mentality about Saul. But then when God spoke on Saul, everything changed. So you have to start saying, Father, speak to my destiny helpers about me. Change the way that they see me. Change the way that they think about me. Change the way that they perceive me. Change my reputation. Let people know what I've been doing in the secret. For the word of the Lord says that everything we do in the secret will be revealed in public. And God is telling you today, those prayers that you've been doing in the secret, the fasting that you've been doing in the secret, it's coming out to light. It's coming out to light. The Bible says that nothing can be hidden under the sun that every secret will be revealed and there were some good things that you have been doing in the secret there were some good seeds that you have been sowing in the secret there were some good things that you've been doing in the secret God is saying this is the time where God is going to re reward you in the public so again father we declare in Jesus name that today you start speaking to our destiny helpers about us I feel the presence of the Lord so heavy. I feel like, wow, you start speaking to our destiny helpers about us in Jesus' mighty name. And everything that they have that belongs to us starts being released tonight. Somebody declare with me, today is the day. Today is the day. The Bible then says, place in his hands on Saul. He said, brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road. As you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 18, immediately. There are certain things that are getting ready to happen in your life immediately. There are breakthroughs. Espíritu Santo, yo recibo esta palabra para mi vida igualmente. There are certain things that are going to happen in your life immediately. The moment you come in contact with the Holy Spirit. Because People of God, in order to receive the Holy Spirit, you must be humbled. And that is what happened to Saul. He was humbled. He was walking around all big and saying that he was hurting people. But the moment that he was humbled, his sight was removed and he was now praying. He received restoration immediately as the Holy Spirit came into his life. People of God, I declare in Jesus' mighty name that you are getting ready to encounter the Holy Spirit of God. And immediately you're going to receive restoration of your gifts. Immediately you're going to receive restoration in the spiritual realm. Because everything that God does in the spirit will be manifested in physical. So I pray that the Lord may restore your prophetic gifts. I pray that the Lord may restore grace. I pray that the Lord may restore favor. I pray that the Lord may restore your finances. I pray that the Lord may restore the blessing of God in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, that everything that was removed may be restored starting tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. It says immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. Amen. He could see again. So what he was not able to do for some time because of his lack of revelation of who God was and because of his lack of wisdom and understanding of who he was persecuting was restored the moment he came in contact with true power. 
because that is the God that we serve. The moment you come in contact with God, the moment you come in contact with the Holy Spirit, the moment you come in, I want to know who's believing this word today. I need to know if there's somebody in this room today that can believe in the power. Hallelujah. That can believe in the power of God. I want to know if there's somebody in this room that can believe that God is going to restore it. Now, if we were to analyze this encounter in this moment in the life of Saul, the Bible says that the reason why his sight was removed was because he didn't know who he was persecuting. He said, who are you, Lord? The same way it's been for many of us. God has removed things from our life because maybe we were seeking God, but we didn't really know him. So he had to remove distractions. He had to remove the things that have been taken away. But the moment that Saul received the revelation of who was the God that he was persecuting, of who was before him, the Bible says that he received restoration of something really important, which was his sight. Amen. I want to declare over your life that as you go deeper into the presence of the Lord, that as you start seeking more of God, that as you start receiving more revelation of the Lord, hallelujah, you are going to start receiving restoration of things that are really important. And if you believe this word is for you, I want you to comment in the chat what God is restoring. I want you to say, uh, God is restoring my family. God is restoring my business. God is restoring my sight. God is restoring my joy. God is restoring my finances. There is nothing impossible for the Lord. And if God was able to restore his sight, how much more can God do for you and for me who have never persecuted Christians? So have faith, people of God, even if you have persecuted Christians in the past and you're turning back to the Lord now, believe that God can still do it for you. This is a season of restoration. Restoration is being spoken in heaven. Restoration is being declared in heaven. And I prophesy in Jesus' mighty name that today is the start of that restoration, that today is the start of that restoration father we press in in jesus mighty name and we declare that it is being manifested in the physical in the physical i i feel this in my spirit as well that there might be some people in this live stream that maybe you don't even know what god is restoring because sometimes we lose things and you don't know that the devil has done something like the prodigal son right he took all his money he left and he thought he was doing good. It was and the Bible says that once he came to his senses, sometimes we have to come into our senses. Sometimes God has to tell you like, hey, the devil has been attacking you. So today I pray that if that is you, if you've been almost like in that mentality of the prodigal son, that you have lost something, but you don't even know what you lost, that the Lord may start speaking to you about it. That if you you know, because of sin, you lost something. Because you didn't appreciate it, you lost something. That the Lord may start speaking to you about it. And if it is his will for it to be restored, that you may receive that revelation. Amen? The Bible says, people of God, that when the prodigal son came to his senses, he said, what am I doing? Let me go back to the house of my father. And then he received a second opportunity. He received a second chance. I pray over you, all 600 of you listening to me today, that if you are believing in God for restoration, if you are believing in God for something new, you may receive it. That those things that have been buried in the back of your mind, those things that you can't even remember because of so much process may start coming back to your mind in Jesus' mighty name and that you may receive full restoration of what the enemy has tried to steal from you. I'm glad to see that many of you guys are believing in this word today. God bless you. Make sure to like this video, people of God, and also subscribe to this, hallelujah, this YouTube channel if you haven't already. God bless those that have liked this video and those that have sown, uh, I believe someone did in Cash App just a moment ago, and those that have done here on YouTube, Jesse, victoriously favored, cosmic nature whisper, uh, Je the other Jesse as well. God bless you, people of God. God bless your seed. God bless your seed and multiply what you're giving into the kingdom of God. Amen.
I pray that you may receive that restoration. And then it says, he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. So one of the things that the Lord is going to do as he brings this restoration in your life is that he is going to restore your strength. God is going to restore your strength. You know, sometimes when people lost, lose a lot of things, sometimes when people have gone through so many trials and tribulations, it is very hard for them to want to do anything. They don't want to pray anymore because it's just been so hard. And I understand that. But today the Lord is saying he's going to restore your joy, your strength, your finances, your position, your status, all of these things. And you're going to have strength like never before. You're going to have joy like never before. You're going to prophesy like never before. You're going to work in your assignment like never before. Hallelujah. In Jesus mighty name. <laughs> Someone said another Christian life. Yes, woman of God, we are all over YouTube because in the last days he's going to pour out, hallelujah, his spirit upon all flesh. And even those that didn't believe in the past are going to start believing because God is real. Amen. Once again, people of God, you're going to start regaining your strength. You're going to walk in your assignment again. You're going to finish college. You're going to, hallelujah, finish that business, whatever it is that the process that the you know attack was trying to do people that they didn't woman that they didn't want to care for themselves they didn't want to do their hair i'm not here to judge you i was there once and i didn't even know that i was there it wasn't until the lord brought restoration to my mind that i said this is not who i am so i pray that it would be the same for you as well that everything that the enemy has been trying to do hallelujah everything that the enemy has been trying to do to attack you, hallelujah, that the enemy has been trying to steal is going to be restored in Jesus' name. And you are going to have strength again. You are going to have strength again. And I want to finish this live stream, hallelujah, before I pray by telling you guys that this moment was so important in the life of Saul because it marked a new beginning, okay? So after this, it says, Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogue that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who prays havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? Has And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priest? Yet Saul, what happened to Saul? Okay, again, before we continue on verse 22, it says, that as soon as this encounter finished, that's why I believe in a God of acceleration. That's why I believe in a God that's able to do things in your life right now. The Bible says that as soon as he received his strength, it says at once, I want you to start declaring at once, I'm going to see, hallelujah, something new in my life. At once, I'm going to see the manifestation of the power of God. Stop punishing yourself for your past and staying there so long and saying, well, it's because I did so many bad things. I understand stand but God is not holding them against you anymore why would you God is already saying I already have the new beginning God is saying I already have everything that you are believing in me for sometimes we are the ones that slow ourselves down sometimes we are the ones that block God from blessing but God already forgave you God already washed you with his blood you know for even God the Bible even says that God has already forgot it he forgot about it but here we are still remembering we have to have this mentality that Saul has. He said, at once. Because the moment you come in power with God, you don't want to keep that back. The moment you receive the revelation, you don't want to keep it a secret. The moment that you receive, hallelujah. The moment that you receive healing, the moment that you receive the blueprint for your business, the moment that you receive a touch from heaven, we don't have to wait and say, God, hallelujah. Give me a sign. Give me another sign. Give me another sign. Saul didn't wait for no sign. He said, I have already received the Holy Spirit. I have already encountered, encountered Jesus. That is all of the evidence that I need to walk in what God has been calling me to do. To walk in what God is calling me to do. I want to give you guys this advice because I've had to learn this as well. We don't always need confirmation for something that is going to help us. We don't always need confirmation for something that God had already called you to do. 
Imagine if now Saul, after he received the Holy Spirit, after Ananias came, he said, well, I still don't know if you're with me. We can't be like that. We have to have faith. I know what I heard God say. I know what I felt when I was praying. I know what he showed me in a vision. I know, hallelujah, what he's been speaking to me about. I'm not going to confirm anymore. I've already received a hundred confirmations. I encountered Ananias. I was blind for a long time. I know that God is calling me to do something. So let this be your confirmation. We got to rise up. We got to believe. We have to press forward. We have to have faith. We have to have courage. The Bible says that when the time came to take the promised land, God told Joshua, be strong and courageous. I will be with you. Hallelujah. The Bible doesn't say that Joshua went back and he said, well, are you sure? No. He said, let's go ahead and take the promised land then. We have to have this mentality as well. To take the promised land. To take the promises of the Lord. Hallelujah. To take everything that God has already said belongs to us. Okay. At once, he began to do what God had called him to do. And people were amazed. Now, I'm going to finish by reading verse 22. And I want to prophesy this over your life as well. Yet Saul, and I want you to put your name right there. Yet Daniela. Yet Pedro. Yet Teresa. Destiny. Autana. Rebecca. Maria. Amen. Yet Daniela grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. Hallelujah. You're going to grow more and more in power. You're going to grow more and more in wisdom. You're going to grow more and more in revelation. You're going to grow more and more in blessing. The more that you walk in what God has called you to do, you're going to grow more in that direction. Stop looking to the past. There's nothing there. If there was something there, God would have kept you there. But God has said, no, there's nothing back there. She's depressed. She's sad. He's sad. He's miserable. I got to bring him out. Don't look back. Press towards what God has for you. Because the Bible says that the more that Saul would do what God had called them to do, the more he would grow in power, the more he would grow in wisdom. People of God, what you're believing in God for is at the other side of your obedience. It's at the other side of you doing what God has called you to do. So get ready because for many of you that have been walking in obedience, that have been walking faithful to the Lord, that have been seeking God with all of your heart, God is saying to you tonight, get ready to grow more and more in power. Get ready to grow more and more in blessing. Get ready to grow more and more in prosperity because the time has come. You went through your trial. You were blinded. Things were taken away from you for some time. Now it's time for you to receive restoration. And with this restoration comes a new beginning. And with this restoration comes open doors. And with this restoration, hallelujah, comes power, comes authority. So God is telling you today, once again, you will recover it all, right? People of God, before this encounter with Jesus, the Bible says, hallelujah, that Saul was already a powerful man, okay? He wasn't a nobody. He was somebody important. And now that he was with God, God had restored his fame, but now he had done it for the kingdom of God. So when God gets ready to bring restoration into your life, it's not going to be like how it used to be. So don't look back even for restoration. Don't look back at how your finances used to be. Don't look back at how your marriage used to be. Don't look back at how you used to be. Don't even look back at how your joy used to be. Because there are some people that used to get joy, and I'm just going to say it, because of sin. Like Saul. He wasn't miserable whenever he would kill people, right? But now that God had done something new in his life, he had brought him a new reason to be rejoiced. And that is still restoration. But it doesn't look like how it used to be. Amen. It doesn't look like how you had it in the past because the new thing that got the new recovery, the restoration that God is bringing into your life is going to be unlike anything that you have seen before, but it's going to bring into your life things that you had lost. Now Saul was looking or he was saying he had his eyes recovered, his sight, but now he wasn't looking at the same things he was looking at before. Now he wasn't looking out to kill or to hurt Christians. Now he was looking on how he could spread the kingdom of God. So I leave you with this word today. Get ready to recover it all. Amen. 
get ready to recover it all everything that has been lost everything that has been taken away this time is going to be different i prophesy over your life people of god that you are walking into permanent blessing you're walking into permanent connections you're walking into permanent blessing you're walking into something permanent things that <coughs> are going to last you forgot my water for a long time Things that are going to last you for a long time. This mark a before and an after in the life. And excuse me, it's when you preach, it gets a little hot. But when, hallelujah, when Saul started to walk for the kingdom of God, he never went back to the person he used to be. He was still somebody blessed, but now he was doing it for God. Get ready because the things that you had lost in the past, the things that the enemy had taken away or that even God took away because of the process are coming back. And this time it's going to be better. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray over you, people of God, that you may receive divine revelation today and divine enlightenment from heaven. That whatever God wants to restore and do in your life, you may receive it. That you will miss out on your portion and you will miss out on your inheritance. That what God has declared that is for this time, by the power that's in the name of Jesus, for the word of the Lord. And I was reading this today in the book of Revelation. It says, Behold, I open a new door. Wow. I wonder why it's freezing. 